We're going to use a quadratic formula to solve this equation. The first thing that we have to make sure of is that we've got everything to one side. We've got our ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. If you identify your a, a here is two. Identify your b, b here is six. Identify your c, c here is three. Using the quadratic formula, we can figure out what our solutions for x are going to be. So just for good practice here, to get familiar with it, quadratic formula again is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If I substitute in my a, b, and c values, b is 6, so it's going to be negative 6 plus or minus square root of be 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 3. All over, 2 times a, so 2 times 2. I calculate some things out now. You got negative 6, plus or minus, square root of. All right, what happens on the inside here? What happens with our discriminant value? You've got 36 minus, it looks like, 24, right? So that's going to be 12. All over 2 times 2, 4. Quadratic formula gets us this far. Now we need to do some simplifying with our radicals. We need to think about perfect squares that go into 12 so we can break this down, right? So perfect square goes into 12. Be 4, right? Be 4 times 3 here. So if I simplify this further, x is going to equal negative 6 plus or minus square root of 12. If I take the square root of 4, you got 2 pops out. Got square root of 3 left over, all over 4. Where the, the rule of simplifying at this stage would be. If this value here goes into this value and the value that's outside the root there, or if they share common factors, we can reduce further. Now, 4 doesn't go into 2, but they do share common factors. The common factor shared between the 2, the 4, and the 6 would be 2. So we could say that x equals, dividing 2 into all of those values, negative 3 plus or minus. 2 goes in here. It would be 1 time, so root 3 all over, 2 goes into 4, 2 times. And one variation on the solution at this point in the game could be just this. So this would be our answer for x. However, it would probably be more correct to say negative 3 plus root 3 over 2 and negative 3 minus root 3 over 2 as solutions because that shows you what both solutions are. All right, so I talked about the importance on the last one of uh, making sure you've got the quadratic idea set equal to zero. So the way this problem is set up in the initial stage, this isn't going to work for us to use the quadratic formula. We've got to move everything over to one side. So if I move everything over, I'm subtracting over 3n, I'm subtracting over 10, now I've got my quadratic form set equal to zero. In this case, since we are solving for n, we'll say that n equals, and just for good practice, n is going to equal negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Substituting in for a, b, and c. Well, let's see. a is going to be 1, right? B is going to be negative 3. C is going to be negative 10. So substituting in for B here, you've got negative be negative 3. So this is positive 3, right? Plus or minus square root of. It's negative 3 for B squared minus 4 times A, which is 1, 
times c, which is negative 10. All over, 2 times a, 2 times 1. n is going to equal 3 plus or minus. Let's see how our discriminant works out here. You've got negative 3 squared, which is 9. A couple of negatives here. If we multiply that out, that's going to be a plus 40, right? So we're going to have 49 left as the discriminant. That's all over 2. Now, we can take the square root of 49, so we should do that. We know that's going to be just 7, right? Meaning, if I'm trying to figure out what n is, it looks like it's going to be 3 plus 7, or 10, over 2. 10 over 2 would be 5. But it could also be 3 minus 7, negative 4. Negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. There's your solutions for n.